Hey guys, Mr. Banker here. This is part two of lesson 2.3, only one objective for this video. We're gonna be using something called synthetic division to divide out some polynomial functions. Now, I sort of introduced this in our long division video, but I wanna make it a little bit more formal. Remember, when we're doing this dividing, we're trying to find factors. So we could say that a polynomial has a factor of x minus k if we get a remainder of zero at the end when we do our division. It works for long division. It's also gonna work for this synthetic division stuff that we're gonna take a look at. Now, before we actually get into using synthetic division, I wanna talk about this x minus k thing because that's what we're gonna be dividing by when we do our synthetic division. And it has to look a certain way. It has to be a linear factor, meaning that it's gonna be x to the first power, also, this has to have a leading coefficient of one in front of the x, so there can't be a number in front of our x at all. It's gotta be just a plain x with a first power on it. If that's the case, like in this example, here's the thing we're dividing by, x with a first power on it, leading coefficient of one. Synthetic division is a really nice shortcut as opposed to using long division. So here's how we're gonna set up our synthetic division. It's gonna sort of look like long division, but we've got like this division symbol flipped upside down. Instead of copying this entire polynomial inside of here, we wanna focus on just the coefficients, the numbers in front of the x's. Just like in long division, if we're missing some of those x's, like in this one we don't have an x cubed term, we need to remember to fill in a zero as a placeholder. So I'm gonna start grabbing coefficients. On this x to the fourth, we've got a one. There aren't any x cubed, so we've got zero. There are negative 10 x squareds, there are negative two x's, and there's a plus four on the end. So we copy down all of those coefficients inside of our division bracket. Now on the outside of our division bracket, we're focusing on this x plus three thing. I wanna look at this three on the end, but when we put it on the outside, we have to remember to do a sign change on it. So instead of being a positive three, it's gonna be a negative three. What that allows us to do is some addition along the way instead of subtraction, and it just keeps some of those sign error things from happening. All right, so now I'm gonna start running through this synthetic division and showing you guys how this works. Now what we always wanna do first is we wanna take this number out in front and just carry it down. So I'm just carrying down that one. Now to go to the next step, what we do is we take this one times our negative three on the outside. Well, one times negative three is negative three, and we're just gonna fill that in in the next blank over. Now when we go down these columns, we're gonna be adding. So zero plus negative three is still negative three, and then we're gonna grab this negative three down on bottom, multiply by our original negative three, so we get nine, and we're just gonna keep adding. So negative 10 plus nine is negative one. Negative one times negative three is positive three, Add these things up, we get one. One times negative three is negative three. Add these things up, we get one. So this thing at the end is our remainder. If we think back to that factor theorem, since we ended up with a non-zero remainder, that would tell us that this x plus three isn't actually a factor of this thing that we started with. But we can still take this and write it out as a polynomial function. So since we started with an x to the fourth power, and ran this division, when we start translating this stuff, we actually need to drop the power one. So we start with an x to the fourth, so when we start writing out this polynomial function, it's gonna start with an x cubed. And all of these numbers down below just become coefficients on our x's. So this one means one x cubed, this negative three means minus three x squared, minus one x, plus one on the end. Now this is a remainder, but we can still include it as part of our polynomial. Since it's positive, it's gonna be a plus one over the thing that we were dividing by. Now this is what we were dividing by at the very top here, this x plus three. So we put the remainder over the x plus three. All right, so another example using synthetic division. I'm gonna set up my division bracket. Inside of it go the coefficients from our original polynomial. So we've got three, eight, five, and negative seven. On the outside, I'm focusing on this two on the end, but remember, do a sign change, so it's a minus two. And now I'm gonna start doing my division. Carry down the three. Three times negative two is negative six. Add these up, we get two. 
2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Add these up, we get 1. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Add these up, we get negative 9. So again, we get a non-zero remainder telling us that x plus 2 isn't actually a factor, but we can still write out this answer that we got when we did our division. So the 3, remember, drop the power 1. We start with a cubic function, so now the thing we're going to write out is quadratic. So 3x squared plus 2x plus 1, and then tack the remainder on the end, so minus 9 over the x plus 2 that we were dividing by at the very top. All right, now with this last example, what we're going to go through and do is we're going to show that both x minus 2 and x plus 3 are factors of this big long polynomial function. So remember, in order for these things to be factors, we have to get a zero remainder at the very end. So we're going to run our synthetic division and show that we get zero as our remainder at the end. So setting up our first synthetic division, grab the coefficients 2, 7, negative 4, negative 27, negative 18. And I'm just going to start with this x minus 2. So remember, grab the number on the end, but do a sign change. So now it's a positive 2. Carry down that first number, so it's a 2. 2 times 2 is 4. Add those up, we get 11. 11 times 2 is 22. Add these up, we get 18. 18 times 2 is 36. Add these things up, we get 9. 9 times 2 is 18. Add these up, we get 0. Since we got a zero remainder, we just showed that x minus 2 is indeed a factor. So that one worked out. Now, in order to show that x plus 3 is also a factor, we could start over from the very beginning. But that sounds like a lot of work. I'm actually going to take this stuff down here that we just got as our answer from that first round of division, and I'm going to use that for our next division. So I'm going to put another synthetic division bracket around this. We're looking at x plus 3, so remember to do a sign change, so it's a minus 3. And I'm just going to run synthetic division again. So carry down the 2. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Add these up, we get 5. 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. Add these up, we get 3. 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. So we get a 0 remainder again. Since we got another 0 remainder, that shows that x plus 3 is also a factor of this big long polynomial function that we started with. If we wanted to write out the answer that we got after running both of these rounds of division, well we started with a quartic function, a fourth power function, but then we ran two sets of division, so instead of dropping the power by one, we're going to have to drop the power by two. So now this two becomes 2x squared plus 5x plus 3. Okay, that's the answer after we ran both rounds of division. That's it as far as this video goes. Remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below. And thanks for watching.